So in case you don't know, this is Zach Woods, co-star of the film. <laughs> Jim Rash, co-writer and co-director of the film. And of course, Julia Louis Drive. who was also a producer of the film, as well as one of the stars. Yep. So how did this come about? I know this is a loose remake of a Swedish film called Force Majeure yes. from 2013. Did you see it first? Did Jim see it first? How did you um, get on board together? I, 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 we didn't I, see it together. I no. called you hoping you'd see it with me. And we hadn't met I, before, and you were like, why are you calling me? And <laughs> get my number. Yeah. Right, uh, yeah. Oh, I got it because I know how to get it. Right. <laughs> no, no um, the, um, I, had, I had just... Uh, made this movie Enough Said with Searchlight, uh -huh. and um, I was uh, in talks with them about working on other projects, and they happened to say that they saw this film at Cannes, and Ruben Osland, who made it, was very interested in doing an American adaptation of it, and would I be interested, and so I, I watched it uh, for the first time they screened it for me, and I was like, oh yeah, I want a piece of that action that is, that looks delicious. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that was five years ago, by the way, so, um, uh, it took a little time. We, we uh, hired, uh, I partnered with um, Anthony Bregman um, at Likely Story. Yay for Ant. Yeah. <laughs> and Anthony's so, here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. You just, yeah, me. <laughs> um, and uh, Stephanie Aspiazu. And, uh, and then we hired Jesse Armstrong of Succession fame yes. and Veep fame, too, by the yes. way. And he did the, the first adaptation. And then uh, we were fortunate to have Jim and Nat come on board, and uh, they did another pass on the script. Yes. And anyway, this is over a very long period of time. I'm condensing. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Jim, you and Nat had also worked with Searchlight on. Uh, yeah, this is our really our. The Descendants, third. which you won an Academy Award for. Yeah, so we did Descendants together. Thank you. And the Way Way Back. And then we did the Way Way Back with them, and then yes, subsequently now. So what interested you in taking on this? Well, part of it was the, 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 the package here, working with Julia, obviously, and, and Will, for that matter, you yeah. know, by the time we all officially got together, and uh, loved working with Searchlight. And you know, we were obviously fans of the movie as well and curious about what this take would be. Um, and I think just all in all, it just felt like something we wanted to do. And it sort of connected with stuff that we like, which is, you know, with Way, Way Back and Descendants, it's sort of, uh, we love the balance between comedy and drama. We love, we love that comedy where it's sort of born out of the drama, you know? We love flawed characters and, and you know, Force Majeure and subsequently Downhill is just filled with it. Yes. It's function. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And Zach, you had worked with Julie before on Veep and also with Will before, Will Ferrell, on The Other Guys, correct? Yeah, and on The Office, actually. And on The Office, that's right. He was, yeah. in, yes, have to mention The Office, of course. Now, was that a factor in you getting cast, or was it just a coincidence that you, had, you knew these people? Prior? I always imagine that anytime I'm cast in anything, it's a collection of every possible advantage conspiring to just eke me through the door of opportunity. <laughs> um, so I have to assume it was. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, it was so exciting because uh, I adore, I mean, it's like comedy Mount Rushmore. It's like Julia Louis Dreyfus and Will Ferrell. And then also I'd seen Enough Said and i have seen Stranger Than Fiction and Everything mm -hmm. Must Go. And the, the combination of having this sort of like Titanic, like comedians who can also have such um, vulnerability Ability, yeah. is pretty irresistible to just have a front row seat to watch that. Uh, you know, acting is the price of admission for me, <laughs> but I get to be an audience member to that. So at the risk of sounding uh, barfingly obsequious, I actually do mean it. Uh, yeah, it was great. And uh, Julia, I read, is this true, that you had never even met Will Ferrell before? Is that possible? It is possible and baffling. We, um, are, we have these sort of parallel tracks in our lives, but we had never met, not even at a party, nothing. And so we met for the first time to talk about this script. And uh, we hit it off right away. And, um, and it was, I was incredibly excited about this possibility. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Until they got to set. And then it was like a nightmare. Yeah, it was. Total cold. The guy's a real asshole. Yeah, like, she could not see me making eye contact with Will, and right. Will did not want me to make eye contact with you. Right. And I, I had to call him number one around him and call you number one number around one, you. Number one, yeah. 
So we shot it all split screen. All split screen. <laughs> they were never, ever in the same they room. They still haven't met. They still yeah. have not met. They just acted to do a tennis yeah, ball. Yeah. Ball. yeah. So were you looking to do something dramatic or just something different than, than Veep? Or you know, what was the appeal of this particular type of project to you? Um, well, the appeal of it was the, the sort of fundamentals of the story. Um, I, the, um, I don't know if everybody knows the, the, the sort of basics of the story, but it's essentially a family on vacation, um, uh, in, in our case, uh, an American family in Austria, and, uh, and they're ostensibly having a good time, and then they're sitting outside at a, a restaurant on the mountain, and there's a loud boom, and there's an avalanche very far in the distance, a controlled avalanche. Um, and then as they're watching it, it gets closer and closer and closer to them until it seems as if it's upon them. And uh, the husband in the family, uh, uh, I should say the wife in the family grabs her children and, and sort of tries to protect them, and the husband grabs his cell phone and takes off. <laughs> and that's really the beginning of the film, frankly. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it's really the unraveling of the sweater after that. To me, that, that the notion of um, sort of seeing reality one way, and then all of a sudden an event happens, and everything that you've been witness to in your life maybe isn't how you thought it was. And it was interesting. And then there are lots of themes in this movie about telling the truth, and about shame, and about... Relationships in general. Relationships yeah. in general. So the, all of that stuff, sort of human behavioral stuff, is it really, I love that. Yeah. That shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, get that shit. Yeah, I love that good. shit. Love that's that shit. shit. Yeah. Um, so, how did it change the story to make the the family American? In the, in the original film, they were Swedish, I think. Yeah. In the Alps, this is an American family in the Austrian Alps. How, how did that kind of change the dynamics of? Well, I mean, the narrative. The very first, the first thing is a fish out of water mm -hmm. element that gets added to it. You know, Americans in Europe uh, is, is very different. You know, I mean, there's a vulnerability that happens when we go on vacation. You know, it's why I think we we love movies or plays or, or our own lives when we're on vacation because everyone's sort of raw. You know, no one's got any power. You know, all vulnerable like a family on vacation. So then to add to that element. Uh, a language barrier, you know, uh, for this family. And, and they're having a horrible time due to this incident and everyone, everything else around them is just joyous. So it's a wonderful like, way to, to, so it was partly doing that. It was partly, one thing we wanted to do, and that this probably, this started in the conversation I'm sure with Julia and them was, we wanted to get a little bit more into the point of view of her character, uh, Billy. Uh, Force Majeure definitely delves in a little bit into that, but it's more about the uh, cowardice and masculinity and dealing with the man, uh, which we have with Will dealing with, but we wanted to add that element to really see this couple uh, divided by this and then sort of question where they stand within our relationship and who and how do they know each other and then whether they'll come back together. And, and also it was important too not to make it a, a, a very black and white, like no, he did the wrong thing muddy. and she's the angel. Uh, they both make some pretty heinous decisions in this story, in this film, and I think that's interesting. You know, mm -hmm. it's an interesting mm -hmm. idea. Uh, good people trying to do the right thing and, and completely screwing up is, you know, uh, is what we do. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So we have a clip that sort of sets up some of these themes, the Americans and also the, the husband and wife kind of having different reactions to it. Uh, this is a scene where they're talking to the head of security at the, the resort. Yes. So, so they will just have, they had just experienced this. The avalanche. Uh, avalanche. Yes. And obviously they are not so far talking about it, but there's been an agreement at least to go to the head of the safety mm -hmm. to at least hopefully ease Billy's, uh, right? Yeah, exactly. And I think, um, and this I, props to Jesse Armstrong because he had this idea that maybe their first instinct might be to find a common enemy to get them through this time, <laughs> mm. as we are wont to do. Yes. Um, nothing's more um, sort of binding than um, hate. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But, um, <laughs> no, I don't mean that. But you know, but I do mean, in fact, um, 
there'll be t-shirts for sale. <laughs> Bobby. No, 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 but to have, but I do mean a common enemy yes. that they can sort of uh, link arms and blame someone else for this incident. Yes. Um, and which is, I think, sometimes what couples do. Yes, yes. And so, anyway. But it, doesn't, it doesn't quite work out that way. So let's take a look at the clip and then okay. we'll talk about it afterwards. So uh, the actor in that scene, Christopher Hibview, uh, was in the original. Yes, he Force was. Major. I was also on Game of Thrones. Yes. People might recognize him. So was, did that play into the casting of him, that he was in the first one? Was it kind of an inside joke? or? It was nice to have a nod to Force Majeure. And mm -hmm. also, he's playing a character that is not in Force Majeure. Yes. Uh, so I think he was really gung-ho to be a part of it. And, it. and he's so hilarious in it, you know? Yeah. This one, one scene. So what was it like shooting? You were, work, you were shooting at a working ski resort. Yes. In Austria, is that correct? Yeah. Super easy. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you this, uh, skiers who have paid a lot to go on vacation and use the lifts that we're using to shoot on loved us. <laughs> <laughs> we, would, uh, we shot, obviously, we're not going to be able to shut uh, a, a, a resort down. We shot two different resorts for different reasons. And uh, we, would, we shot all practically. Uh, we shot on lifts. We shot on a gondola for seven hours. They yep. rode it. And we just went around and around and around, kept doing the scene, jumped off to take pee breaks, which made them angry. Great. Uh, no, excuse me, one pee break. One pee break. <laughs> yeah. Well, I told Julia, at three and a half hours, you may have a pee break. <laughs> and that's just how it had to be. The Austrians were just like, just got to UTI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who keeps skiing? <laughs> we would be on this ski lift and, uh, you know, two of the best of our abilities in our minds, uh, we would do like a little NASCAR thing where they run in and they change the camera, the actors would switch, and then we'd start the thing rolling again and Julia and Zoe Chow would go up and down doing the same scene. But, you know, off screen, you can't see it, but there's just this huge gathering of skiers waiting for us to get this lift going again. Oh. And they are saying things that I, uh, are in German or in other languages <laughs> that I, I know or not. We love movies. <laughs> um, uh, we're so excited you're here. Take your time. And even if they were saying that in German, it would still sound it aggressive. It still sounds like they were not happy. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was good to be able to, it was fun sort of to be able to shoot on a mountain. I mean, you can probably oh, speak yeah. to that. It was, well, I mean, it was the real deal. I mean, we were out there and there was a massive amount of snow last season. Massive. In fact, there had been avalanches all around the area for yes. true. And, um, uh, and we were freezing, and it had a very um, a sort of uh, running gun feeling to it, you know, that with the crew, and everybody had to be really nimble because weather was constantly changing. So what we thought we were shooting tomorrow morning is completely flipped on its head, and we're doing something else. And it was um, delightful. And there was something about the challenge of that. Um, it was incredibly exotic. I, I actually loved it. Yeah. yeah? Yeah, I did. Are you an experienced skier? Did you have to uh, brush up on your... Um, no, I'm I'm an experienced skier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So did it feel like a vacation in a way, or not? Not necessarily. No, it did not feel. Like a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's funny. Like watching that too. It's like some Christopher said when we were doing a different press thing. Was like the mountains are the teeth of the world, and oh, yeah, uh, right. they're scared. I mean, those mountains are so beautiful, but they're also yeah. awesome in the like awe-inspiring yes. sense where. It, it makes you feel sort of negligible and small in addition to delighted by how beautiful it is. And I think that's another American thing. Watching that scene, I was like, I, I have a friend who got a pretty serious medical diagnosis, and he said his first instinct was to, like, to be like, I want to get God on the phone, and I don't care who he's with. This is Jonathan, and I own a business, and I'm an American. You know, we have this <laughs> fantasy of control, yeah. right? Yeah. That like you think like, oh, I'm the master of my own destiny. I, I you know, because our lives are so drenched yeah. in whatever. But but uh, <laughs> but I think those mountains sort of remind you like, oh, I'm not in control at, at all. all. Yeah. Right. And, and you can go to the customer service guy, but forget about it. Yeah. Right. right, right. Yeah. Now, you have two sons in the film, and you have two sons in real life who are a little older than the sons of the film. Yes. Did the film make you nostalgic for those days of having younger boys? Oh, or? I'm always nostalgic. I'm, really? I, I, I yearn for days when I had younger kids. Yeah, I mean, I love my guys now. They're fabulous. But, um, yeah, I 
love being a mom to boys. It's, it's completely awesome. Yeah. yeah. Did it remind you of any vacations that you had taken with your family? Or it had never gone quite that badly, I hope. But. Oh, yeah. We had some bad vacations in the snow. <laughs> I, nothing like that with an avalanche. And my husband has never run away from me. <laughs> We did, we've had a couple of very tricky, uh, you know, I mean, it's hard. Equipment, particularly when kids are little, if anybody skied and you're trying to get boots and hats and gloves and oh my God in heaven, it can be very, very, uh, shall we say, challenging, but ultimately lovely. Yes, yes. And you've been married to Brad Hall for quite a, quite a long time now. Yes. Uh, you met on Saturday Night Live. No, we did not. We oh, met you met in North, North, North yes. Northwestern and then yes. you got, both got cast on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Um, and Will Ferrell has also been married to his wife for quite a long time. Did that help to kind of know the contours of a, a long marriage? It actually did, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, I think that it, I'm, it's safe to say I'm very much a family person, and Will is as well. He has three boys, and, um, uh, and in fact, he's not here at this moment because they had a soccer game, and he wasn't going to miss it. So he's very devoted, and I am too, and, and married with partners for a long time. So... Yeah, we know that world. <laughs> yeah. And um, I think we could bring, and we talked about that in our first meeting. Yeah, yeah. 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 It was all nice, there was, this won't totally mean every, anything to you all, if you haven't seen the film, but I, I won't lose, but, but I remember there's this part where they're watching one of their kids who doesn't love skiing that much, and he's right. taking his time coming down. And you two had a little discussion beforehand about that idea, of what you were, you know, this would Attention be. Attention of that. Because they, they, they didn't want to call attention to it because he was acting up. And so it was nice to see them sort of improvise this apparent thing that they absolutely both knew when dealing with kids who were trying to test you. Right, right. right. And so it was sort of nice to have that. They sort of, I saw you talk about it, and then we shot it. And then I really wanted to cut it. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, but it was just nice to see those two have a conversation about what would you do here right. with a kid doing this. Right. And Jim, you're part of a directing team with Nat Faxon. Yes. Um, and I read that you'd never worked with two directors at, at once before, is that correct? I, I never had, and I never will again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'll never work with Nat again. That's why he's not here. <laughs> how do you guys divide the labor? I mean, how, how do you handle that, having two, well, two directors it, at once? No, we do everything together, especially, well, cer certainly as directors, you know, it's important that we're, you know, uh, as part of the guild that, you know, we work together in, in every capacity. And we met at the Groundlings Theater, which is a sketch comedy improv theater in Los Angeles. And so we were friends and we went through the whole improv thing. So we sort of approached both writing and, you know, as in that sort of vein of improv, of, of giving and taking and, and listening to each other to the best of our abilities. And, but I think we're usually on the same page with stuff. And if one of us feels, uh, you know, particular about something, I, one of us will just say, well, go forth, you know, and, and hopefully get to say, I told you so, that you were wrong. <laughs> Um, but I think for the most part we do everything together. On the writing side, uh, we do split stuff up, you know, uh, quite different process, um, and, uh, and then get together and sort of hone it as one. Mm -hmm. And you're also both actors, but you don't appear in this film. Was there just not a role? Uh, I take? refuse to let <laughs> she refused. Uh, uh, I'm sure Nat would tell you he really wanted to, and I said no. But no, I don't know. There was there's not that much. It's a very small yeah. cast Tiny of cast. a movie, True. and there are only you know a few Americans in the movie, and none of those you know everything else is outside of that. So yes, yeah. uh, as great as my accents are, and I will be doing those <laughs> a little later for you. I do ten to twelve um, uh, spot on impersonations. And Zach, you also have a background in improv, mm -hmm. uh, Bright Citizens Brigade, among other places. Uh, was this a, a, a film where you could use some of that? Was there some room to kind of? A little bit, not that much. I mean, the script is really unbelievable. Jesse Armstrong is a genius, and these guys did such a great job. Um, and uh, it's nice, though, when you're improvising, when you feel like it is supplementary as opposed to corrective. Like once in a while you'll be on a project where you're like, oh boy, this. Uh oh. This, yeah, yeah, uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I gotta f try to fill this pothole as we're shooting. And that doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's a sort of like, you know, you can feel yourself. Yeah. Because it's scary, but this is like, oh, maybe we'll find a little moment or a little look or something, but it's, it's pretty much intact. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how did each of you kind of find the balance between comedy and drama in this? Because there's some very serious moments in the story, but it's also funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, we sort of came at it 
sort of the same way, which was uh, we needed this to seem believable. <laughs> Um, and you know how life is. It can be very dramatic and can be very funny all within a 10 minute span. And, and that's sort of how we approached the material. Um, and, and it was thrilling to do so. I mean, the scene that, that we have a big scene with, um, Will and I have a big scene with Zach and Zoe Chow, who plays Rosie, his girlfriend. And uh, it's a very dramatic scene but some genuine big, big laughs, laughs within yeah. it. Yeah. Because I think that, you know, in, in dramatic moments, we're looking for some kind of relief, relief. you know, because yeah. there's tension. Mm -hmm. yes. It's the same way we, you know, uh, a, a dramatic story that you tell to someone years later has almost uh, an anecdotal new vibe to it, you know, because yes. when you look back at it, it sort of changed, you know. Yeah. And, or you found the humor in the moment. And I think it was important to make sure that all the humor uh, sort of fit in this world, mm -hmm. you know, grounded, but also when it was dramatic that it was, you get comedy that's just beautifully born out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, we had this 11-page scene in the middle of, of this movie, you know, uh, Force Majeure is similar in the sense that it has almost a play-like quality. And so these four just got to be with each other for 11 pages and we just ran it from beginning to end over and over again. So for three in that, days. For three days. So yeah. in that moment, you as actors, I'm sure, it's like you get to be in the moment, you get to discover things. You improvise, but also improvise action or improvise you know, yeah. moments that just change. And you watched, we got to watch for three days as these four. Uh, <laughs> everything evolves, it's this beautiful thing. Like, you know, usually you only have like a day or half a day to shoot a scene. But when you see what happened between the day, the next second and third day, you see, oh my God, there's these new levels to it that, you know, with time you find. And you know, and with Julia, it's like, she's like, I think needs 32 takes. <laughs> Backstage you referred to that as the who's afraid of Virginia Woolf scene, I think. Yes. Was that something that you guys all thought about in terms of how to play that dynamic of the two couples? and? Um, well, there is that element. I mean, I, I wasn't sort of tapping into to that play, thinking about it. I was tapping into this scene. But there is this, you know, mashup of two uh, sort of different generations with completely different experience experiences. And the <laughs> and and Zach and and Rosie sitting there, sort of deer in the headlights <laughs> as this shit goes down. It's pretty. It's it's phenomenal relief to cut yes. to them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. What was it like for you to do that scene, Zach? Uh, it was so interesting and fun and weird. I mean, it, it's funny. Like I'm. I really like this movie, and one of the reasons I really like it is because I feel like it depicts a couple in a way that feels familiar to me. Uh, in the sense that, like, I guess my experience of having been in relationships and being in a relationship is that you're endlessly surprising yourself and each other in good and horrendous ways, and, <laughs> and revealing yourself to be both worse and better than you'd <laughs> feared and hoped, you know? And, it, it's, it's so untidy in a way that I, makes me feel less alone when I watch it there, but also when I was watching it happen in front of me. Right after my parents, all, right after my parents got married, they told me that like a, 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 two of their friends came over, this couple, and they got in this horrific fight, like something like that, you know, going up and down stairs into their car, then back, this ugly knockdown, wow. drag out fight, and my parents said it felt like a wedding gift in a way <laughs> because they were saying like look it's here we are it can be this gnarly mm -hmm. and you can show up the next day with a couple lumps but you're okay not literally they weren't <laughs> <laughs> yes. i don't think emotional yes yeah. exactly yeah. and that idea that like you don't i don't know yeah that you're allowed to be kind of a mud puddle and still be lovable you know, is a comforting idea to me. So watching these two really go to pieces, but still maintain their sort of underlying vulnerability and humanity, even as they're behaving in yeah. such an atrocious way, was really uh, moving. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was fun to watch, because, I mean, obviously this, this is towards the top of this 11-page scene, and it, and it goes off it the goes rails on. quickly uh, <laughs> and gets worse, but it also is in a key moment where Billy crosses a line. Yeah. Uh, and so we start to muddy it, even within this context of this scene. And I mean, just this is only, to me, always a fun fact that I, I, I 
I love telling only because I watched it happen, but we shot that for three days. And uh, for the, I think after day two, these two, uh, Julia and Will were done with that sort of emotional elements of this scene. We were just gonna shoot some more coverage from the third day. And then we got to the third day, our DP, Dan Cohen, mentioned, because we, we shot on both sides of that giant room, so we were able to cross the line and go over each of their shoulders, but we hadn't gone over the other shoulder. So he said, uh, we should get a, just a couple runs from the other side, just because that way you can bounce back and forth. And then, of course, we went uh, delicately to Julia and Will and said, so we sort of need to go back and do that emotional scene a couple more times. <laughs> uh, just twice, uh, two setups. But we, that's, that's what I was talking about, the evolution of their performances, because that moment of her telling that long story is all from one take that third day. Wow. So, and his reactions as well, it was because she was delivering something different. And, it, and all of it was great already. It just was something, and I, I couldn't explain it any more than there was a more, it, it doesn't matter. There was another layer that just sort of happened. So you've done some dramatic roles before, and I've said had elements of drama to it as well. When you're playing a scene like this, I mean, is it a different process for you than, than doing comedy? I mean, do you draw on something different no, emotionally? No, it's exactly the same, to be honest. Yeah? Yeah, it really is. I mean, uh, because b b b both genres, if, um, I, I mean, first of all, I think they overlap. Uh, but I think there has to be an element of authenticity and honesty at the risk of sounding like an um, asshole actor. But, you know, uh, in, in, as you approach the work, whether it's dramatic or comedic, in order for, this, if, for it to stick. And, um, and so there's really not that much of a difference. I mean, of course, if you're delivering jokes and so on, there's timing and all of that business. But once again, what's behind it is a, a kind of a, a, a honesty and truth. It's got to come from a very truthful spot, I think, to land. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, without giving anything away, I mean, the film does touch on some other themes that seem particularly relevant right now with yes. sort of the idea of gaslighting, perhaps, and yes, truth female, telling. female rage and yes. apologizing for, for rage. I mean, was that. Did that appeal to you about this story that it felt very kind of much contemporary? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I love that theme. I love the idea of, um, uh, well, truth. You know, and and facts. And uh, do they apply anymore? These these. Uh, and, and, and that is a theme in the movie. And, and then, the, of course, there are gender roles that we sort of uh, discover in this film or sort of play with. And, and I think that's also really interesting sort of to, um, so there are a lot of themes. But I think the, the idea of truth and owning truth and owning mistakes and shame, these are very, very prevalent issues for today. Uh, very much so. Was that something you tried to sort of layer into the story, Jim? Oh, all of that stuff? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's inherently, you know, with Force Majeure as a guidepost, it really yeah. was examining truth. It was yeah. examining uh, not, just, not just truth between these two people, but truth for themselves about facing who they are and, uh, and quite honestly, who they are within this relationship. So Billy's character really goes on a journey subsequent to this. Uh, with characters sort of asking her that very question, you know, not just happiness, right. but are you taking care of you? Because I think, you know, couples work when each, each are happy where they are and so they can share in each other's lives together. So I think this is very much two people grappling with what they, as Julia said before, a lens was removed and were they being honest with what they feel with relationship? And then subsequently, uh, Zach and, and Rosie, Zach and Zoe's characters, uh, are on the, on the precipice of having this discussion. So they're used as uh, not just images of maybe what Will and Julia's character were, but again, they're facing, are we being honest about what we want? Right. Uh, and so it's sort of this nice B story that complements the whole idea of wherever you are in a relationship, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. further down the road or in the beginning, it's important to, to face. So what was the biggest challenge for each of you in, in making this film? Zach, you wanna start? That's a good question. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, I suppose, like, one of the things that's hard is you, you, uh, he's, uh, the guy I'm playing, 
sort of naturally aligns with Will's character at a moment when Will is being pretty badly behaved. And I think I was cautious about, I didn't want him to just be a kind of like bro code mm -hmm. schmuck right. who's like backing up the guy as a default setting. Mm -hmm. I thought it would be better if he's someone who is in, who really doesn't want anyone to feel bad and would prefer a sort of wallpapered over pleasantness um, just from his own good intentions. And that's, that was hard to, you know, it took a little bit of thought. I mean, it, yeah. the, the truth is, I mean, the heavy lifting was, was these guys. But if, I, if there was a challenge, I think it was that, yeah. Yeah, but I have to say, um, to, Zach did it so brilliantly because you um, played this guy in such a way so that you felt a, a, a enormous sympathy and, and empathy for Will's character, and that allowed us to do the same. Mm -hmm. And I think that was really important, and it was um, a, a new, an, an, an unusual um, approach, and it really, really helped the film. Thanks. Yeah, That's it's nice. true. Yes. Jim, what was the biggest challenge for you as a writer and director in telling the story? Um, well, you well, wanted so to recast everybody. I wanted right? to recast everybody. Yeah. Oh, I had my dream team. I you were going to do like an Eddie Murphy thing where you played all the different. Yes, characters. yes. Like uh, Morbid. I'm still going to do it. I think in the privacy of my home, I'm gonna put it up on YouTube. Uh, I think people will appreciate it. Um, uh, I, you know, since Nat's not here, I'd say the challenge is working with him. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, you know, it's we. I think the challenge was just an overall, you know, between way, way back and this was probably four years. So it was not, you know, you were getting those sort of sea legs back and then you're adding to the fact that we shot on a, an active, at an active water park in the heat of summer and now we just switched it to a mountain in the dead of winter, <laughs> uh, which seems to be our theme. Um, Next it's movie is going to be about steam. It's just steam. It's just, just, you did the hot water yeah. and the cold water. Yeah, yeah, we're just, you know, it's just elements and then I'm done. That's it. That's my trilogy. But I, I think uh, I think the idea, I think there's a number of things. And one of those challenges is just the, the task of, of doing an American take on force majeure, you know, yeah. trying to preserve the things that made us react so well with that movie, but also know that we're making something, our own version of it, you know, mm -hmm. using, which I think is why this movie was such a, an interesting one to tackle for that reason, because there is a play that's, that's beating in the center of this movie and force majeure for that matter. It's really about hearts changing. And an incident happens very early on, and these two people have to navigate their way, hopefully, back to each other. So I think that you could tell that story, much like a play, with different, different sets, different, different pieces within that. So I think the challenge was just balancing that and, and thinking about that the whole time while we were there. How about for you, Julie? Was there a day on the schedule that you had like circled, like, this is going to be my big? Well, that scene, the big scene, that yeah. was like, ah, oh, you know, that yeah. was. Oh, uh, we're being uh -oh. released. <laughs> Guys, we have to go, I guess. Uh, we have, we have to <laughs> okay. Um, that, that scene was, was very uh, challenging. And I, would, and I would say that, you know, honestly, sort of trying to thread that needle of, of drama and comedy and keeping it all in the same sort of um, uh, space um, and being held in that same space it was it was an exciting challenge, but it wasn't you know it was hard to do mm -hmm. you know yeah um, but um, yeah but I loved it I loved that challenge yeah so we have a few questions from the audience here's a question from Dan uh, you've all been in some of the funniest shows of all time was there a particular scene that was especially hard to perform without cracking up with laughter oh, oh. in this movie uh, I, I or guess so. or on your well, Television since series. we're here to talk about the movie, <laughs> there is a scene that we have with Miranda. Actually, yeah, the dinner scene, right? Yes. Yes, we yes. had a scene with uh, Miranda. So Miranda Otto, Otto plays. Miranda yes. Otto plays, yes. So. Yes, and um, gosh, what's the actor's name? Uh, I w was going to say Charlie, but that's his character's name. I know. Anyway, anyway, um, and we had a, a dinner scene. It's a, it's a four-hander, and uh, Will goes off on a tangent talking about his father's passing, and he tells this it just a absolutely labored story, labored to try to story stall. that has no, there's nothing interesting about <laughs> nothing it. Nothing interesting about it. Uh, and everyone can feel it in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> and the more he did it, 
uh, the funnier it got, and it was, it was also hot in that restaurant, so that it sort of helped, too. We were all sweating, but yeah, there was something about that, that scene in particular. Yeah, mine would probably be this. I mean, it's easier when you're behind a monitor. It doesn't right. matter if right. you're sort of chuckling. You know? right. Yeah, right. So we did a lot, yes. Zach, did you have trouble keeping a straight face at all with Will and Julia? Um, yeah, I, I mean, the scene was really funny, but one of the nice things about the fact that there's dr dramatic stakes is it sort of roots you into the fictional circumstances. So I didn't, it, there's stuff that I thought was like intellectually so funny, but my body was still in the like <laughs> trauma of the <laughs> past 30 seconds, so you don't really laugh, you know? Right, right. Um, Except that Zach, every time we would do it, he would <coughs> try to make Will feel better or uh, 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 Pete's, that's the character's name, feel better, and he would always come up with some sort of empathetic, what's the sea cucumber line? Uh, when, when a, a, oh yeah, yes. when sea cucumbers get scared, they evacuate all of their internal organs to their rectum. <laughs> yes, and so, but. <laughs> You're welcome for that new knowledge. 90 and Second so, Street Bar, highbrow. <laughs> yeah, pet stores are gonna run out of it. <laughs> But anyway, he, he, yeah, it was always another, it was a different kind of uh, sea cu cucumber line or thereabouts every single take. So it was a question <laughs> of sort of like stealing yourself for it and staying in the moment. Yeah. A uh, question from Eric for Julia. Uh, when you met Will Ferrell, did you swap SNL stories? And if so, what were they? Oh. Um, we, we didn't swap SNL stories initially, but we did over time, um, and it was, uh, I mean, I don't know, I mean, he was on the show much longer than I was. I think he was on the show for seven years, maybe, mm -hmm. or something, and I was only on the show for three years, and we were not there. He had Lauren Michaels as, uh, was there when he was there, and I did not, and it was a very different experience, uh, but there is something about SNL that feels sort of like a, a, a fraternity or something, and that sounds boy-y, but you know what I mean, like a club. And, um, and so you, you do trade war stories about doing live TV and, and, um, and stuff like that. I don't know, I, it, it, was, it was fun because uh, the, the schedule of that show and the way that show is made has not changed since, well, I wasn't there in 75, but it certainly hasn't changed since 1982 when I was in the cast, mm -hmm. and it's still the same now. And so it, it, there is something very familiar about the experience, mm -hmm. yeah. And you and Will were on the Oscars last night. Thank you for coming on such oh, short sure. notice. You're very funny. <laughs> <laughs> What was that experience like for you presenting at the Academy Awards? I gotta tell you, I was scared as shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was really nervous. Really? Yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, I mean, no, presenting and doing those kinds of things at award shows is always a little bit, uh, but it's also very exciting, very exhilarating. And you know, I don't know, I didn't watch the show on TV, but it's really fun to be in that room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got kind of a vibe to it that's mm. like, Oh my God! It it, it feels, yeah. um, you know, ele elevated. It, you're, you're kind of, it, I don't know. I found the whole thing really thrilling. Yeah. Yeah. And Jim, you won an Oscar for The Descendants. What was that experience like? How do you remember it? Was it was it fun to get up there? Were you nervous? Or? Well, I mean, the whole to your point, the whole evening is sort of you're out of your body. The whole yeah. experience, you know. I think that uh, um, it's. Yeah, I mean, your name's called, and then you sort of had that thing where it sort of yeah. go flush, you know, and then we were walking up there, and, and I knew Alexander, who we worked with, was going to sort of take a lead, because he had, had a, he had spoken, I think, when he won for Sideways, and he really wanted to, like, thank his mom or something, so he was sort of taking a lead, so Nat and I were just sort of hovering there, and I, I, when you get up on stage, even if you're presenting, it's, it's ki kind of a, um, a terrifying sight. Yes. You know, there are three tiers, I think. Totally. And then they also have this monitor, and there's this triangle that's just getting smaller. <laughs> and it's basically saying, this is how much time you have. So as soon as you see this, you know, you know $100,000 pyramid sort of <laughs> closing in on you, like you have to get through the vortex. Oh, how weird. And, and the audience is all people you're used to watching when you're in an audience. So you're looking yes. at it. it's all movie stars. You're just looking. And then it's this you thing. Can't it sounds look at like them. a nightmare. Yeah, you can't look They were like, yeah. numbers are too intimidating. Let's do an, a nice triangle. We'll ease you. <laughs> like a weird hypnotic therapy. Well, now, yes. they're back to numbers now, by the oh, way. Oh, they are? Oh, oh yeah. 45, they must have saw 44, my face. 43, 42, 41. <laughs> yeah. 41? 
Yeah, they were giving oh, some people more. 45 seconds. It was like big triangle, little triangle, <laughs> done. <laughs> Um, another question for Julia. How much input did you get as far as your character and dialogue was concerned? Since you're also a producer on the film, did you have more, more say over uh, your character than you might have if you were just uh, an actor in the film? Uh, just a lowly actor in the film. <laughs> um, I, I did have some, well, I mean, I had, I had input on the whole script, you know, right. from the get-go. So, um, but I, I didn't write the script. Uh, these guys did, Jesse did. And um, so, uh, but yeah, I was definitely involved in that Very process. Much so. Yeah. Very much so. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we have time for one more question. Let's see. Uh, a question from uh, J.S., who went to Northwestern in 1978. Oh. Graduated in 78. Go, Kat. Uh, what's, your, what's your favorite memory from Northwestern? Oh. Oh. Well, um, I guess, I would, generally speaking, it would be the people that I met there um, mm -hmm. uh, that really changed my life. Um, and I would say that I, when I first got to Northwestern and as a freshman, I got cast in an improv show called The Meow Show. Um, and um, uh, why are you laughing? Is that funny that it's <laughs> The Meow Show? I, just, I love title. improv group names more yeah. than <laughs> I would put them on walls <laughs> as I collect Yeah, meow show. And it was a very cool thing on campus, even though it sounds kind of dumb. But it was really cool. And, um, and that changed my life. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. when I was like, oh, man, this is when my world opened up. Yeah. And now both your sons have graduated from Northwestern. Is that right? No, one son did, and the other son graduated from Wesleyan. Oh, Wesleyan. Yes. OK. Yeah. So continuing the family tradition. Yeah. So uh, this film is coming out on Friday, Valentine's Day. Would you recommend this to the audience as a, a would, date movie? Would we recommend this? <laughs> as a date movie for Valentine's oh, Day. I mean, no. if you don't have anything else to do, yeah. <laughs> Look, you can go to the movie, and if you are on shaky ground with your... Fast and Furious is on Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, no, I've you, seen the maybe film. Maybe you I think... come together, leave apart. I don't know. <laughs> No, I think it's a good film to see, actually, because it spurs conversation, which I it think does. is good. Yeah, that's actually, the idea. So yeah. Hopefully everyone will go see it in theaters this Friday, downhill. I'd like to thank Julia Levy dreyfus Jim Rash, and Zach Woods. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and he's staying.